In today's video, we're building my dream fishing pond. And a couple episodes ago, we went into the transformation we're making for this hunting land, and now we're finally building a pond on it. Now, this is gonna be awesome because we're gonna be able to build this pond from the ground up exactly how it needs to be to grow a lot of big fish. We're thinking bass, catfish, bluegill, literally the Kentucky special. So here we go, starting off day one. Our first steps for building this pond is scouting a place to put the pond. We're in the eastern part of Kentucky, so we're in mountain country, as you can see. And you really can't just build a pond anywhere, so you have to find the perfect spot before you even start. Like I mentioned in one of the past episodes, this actually used to be an old coal mine, and so there used to be a pond there before they broke the dam and ripped it out. Check this out. They said there was a natural spring on this property somewhere and that this used to be an old pond, but since then it's been drained. Since everything's already there except the dam, we figured that right there would be about as good of a spot that you could pick. So whenever day two rolled around, we got all of our heavy equipment, headed down into the bottom of where the pond's gonna be and just started clearing out all those trees. To really make sure that the bottom composition is what we want and to put the structure where we want it, we really gotta get in there and clear out all the bushes and all the trees and really make sure that the bottom is easy even and flat and that there's no big holes in it that we didn't know about. In a way, it would be really cool to flood all that stuff and let the fish swim in it. But as soon as we did that, our luck, there would literally be a hole, like a well in the bottom of a pond and we wouldn't even know it. And then it just drain every day. So now the equipment we're using to build this pond is one, a dozer. This thing is an absolute hoss. It basically pushes dirt wherever you want the dirt to go. The dozer operator, which is my cousin, tells the dirt to move and the dirt moves. This thing is OP when it comes to building ponds. You could not do it without it. Or you could, but it'd be really hard. Next thing we have is a smaller excavator. Now on a big project like this, we're dealing with some big trees, big bushes. We're really not using this one as much, but we have it here just in case we need it. What we do use a lot is the big excavator. This one's almost twice as big as the smaller excavator. And we're getting in there, picking up dirt, moving the dirt, ripping up trees, all that good stuff. If it needs dug up, this is our tool to do it. Then we have the articulated truck. This is basically an off-road dump truck, which is specialized in hauling large amounts of dirt in places that a normal truck couldn't go. For example, a bottom of a pond. So with my dad, my uncle, and my cousin, all three working together with all those pieces of equipment, they're seriously gonna get this pond done about like that and they're gonna get it done right. And as the day goes on, their objective is still to clear out the pond and then get all the brush and trees, haul it off, pile it up and then actually burn it because we don't have anything else to do with the wood and we have to get rid of it so that we can keep digging the pond believe it or not it's a whole lot harder to burn this much wood than you'd think just for this one pile it took us like a couple days and we had to keep brisking up the fire to where it would keep burning the new material at the end of day two though we ran into our first roadblock and our articulated truck actually was messed up we had to figure out why and then we had to fix it basically on the motor where a few fuel lines were held together the little ring popped off and so the two fuel lines just vibrated against each other until eventually there was a hole in one it kind of just happens that's just natural wear and tear but at this point in day two we could really look at the pond and see kind of what we were going to end up with and that's when me i wanted to know what could we do to make it big i mean you got to think about it guys the bigger the pond we can make the better the pond we can make in a pond yes bigger is better always but that's when i talked to dad and realized it's actually not why can't we just build that corner of that field up four foot higher, basically making a second dam? We'll see if we can, but let's give it more places to leak. So is the problem that we just don't have enough dirt? Maybe. It's according what kind of dirt this is. See, this hole so far, that's okay. See, when they mined this coal, they drilled the rock and shot the rock up, and they hauled it off to uncover the coal, and they dumped it somewhere. If they dumped all that rock here, then we can't use this stuff. If they dump the dirt that come off the top of the rock here, then, then we're good. We've got plenty to work with. Basically, what my dad was saying about this pond is that our biggest problem and biggest potential risk is that when we go to build the dam, Either one, we're not going to have enough dirt to do it, or two, the quality of dirt actually won't be good enough to hold water. So what makes one kind of dirt better than another kind of dirt? Well, some dirts have more clay in them, and clay is like hydrophobic, so water doesn't just seep through them. That's good dirt. Any kind of dirt that can really pack together and hold back water, that's good dirt. Bad dirt is really rocky. It's really dry, kind of brittle, and doesn't pack together very well. In dirt like that, water will just find a way around the rocks, down a crack, through that. And slowly but surely, like, you, you just get, like, the water just goes through the rock, and, I mean, it'll drain the whole pond. It, it just happens. And with this being an old coal mine, we mentioned this earlier, there's just um, a surplus of bad dirt 
I guess. And so good dirt's kind of hard to find. That is our limiting factor when we're building this pond. Day three and day four are pretty straightforward. We ended up fixing the articulated truck to where it's back on its wheels and ready to just haul some more dirt. And that's exactly what we did. We used the excavator, dig the dirt, load the dirt into the articulated truck and the articulated truck would take it all the way down to the other side of the pond and start pouring it out so that we could start building the dam. My cousin's over there on the bulldozer because not only can you just dump out dirt and call it a dam, you have to use the dozer, pack it in very good to where water won't leak through it and that it won't wash away as well. And just keep in mind, this dam has to be very tall, but to build a dam to hold back water, you don't just have to build it high. As high as you go, then you have to build it out to the side too. So the higher the dam is, if you make it one foot higher, you have to make it come down even more. So it's so much more dirt. And it can't just be any dirt. It has to be good dirt. That good dirt that we just can't find. I mean, technically we could buy the dirt, but man, then you're talking about expensive because you're buying dirt. And we literally have 200 acres. Why can't we just find good dirt? One nice touch that you'll notice up towards the dam is that we actually left a few big trees left in the bottom of the pond. And yes, those are going to be flooded. Now they're not going to go up to the top, but they are going to go about 20 feet up the tree. And I just think that's going to be the perfect spot for me to sit in a boat or off the bank and just flip a jig right up to the tree and like kick its way all the way down i guarantee there's gonna be a bass sitting somewhere on that tree and speaking of 20 foot i actually took the drone and flew it down into the bottom all right guys so right now this is the pond it's looking pretty good but what's important to know about this is let me get a little bit closer and let me actually show you where the water level is gonna be so we're gonna have to keep on going down and down and the water level is going to sit about right here and i figured out with the altitude that it is actually going to be 35 feet deep at its deepest point i don't know about you but i think that's a mega deep pond if yeah, i do say so myself most ponds are like six foot deep max that one's going to be 35 so as we're digging up the dirt we keep the good dirt send it off to the dam dump it out pack it down but the rocks will grab those with the excavator and set them over in a pile that's when we start to see this big pile forming of giant boulders that are the size of a truck bed that's a big rock and we have a lot of them. like look at this rock pile i'm telling you this right now if we had to buy those rocks it would be probably over ten thousand dollars depending on where you bought them potentially more and every day that we dig every scoop that we dig we're finding more and more rocks and at the end of day four we're just pulling them out putting them all in a pile and we'll figure out what to do with them later. It's day five. And at this point, I actually have to leave for like five days. So my dad, uncle, and cousin, they're just gonna see sitting here digging this pond for five days and I'm not even gonna get to see any part of it. So I headed out and for the entire week, I just thought about what could possibly be happening at the pond and then i finally got to come back when i came back the dam was like 70 percent complete which is pretty crazy because i mean i don't know man it's starting to look like a pond now the rock pile had gotten even bigger and it had even gotten deeper and they backed it up even farther into the field where they've been digging dirt you know put on the dam day 10 rolls around and i got the news from my cousin hey you need to be figuring out where you're gonna put the rocks because they're kind of in the way and we need the dirt that the rocks are sitting on ah okay Let's figure it out. If we have all these rocks, we definitely want to do something creative with them and use them to our advantage. We want to put them in the bottom of the pond. That way the fish can swim around them, use them as structure. So I told my cousin where exactly I wanted them, a rough estimate, and so they came up with a cool idea, and that's exactly what they did on day 10. The pond is really starting to take shape and look like somewhere fish could actually live. Instead of just a big mud bowl, now it has structure in it and places that fish can hide, swim, live, sleep. If fish sleep, well, I don't know if fish sleep. I just try to catch them. It is finally day 11. The pond's really starting to take shape. Rock piles are in place. We've even got a tree down there in the bottom of it. And the dam is getting closer and closer to fill level. But before we finish the dam, we have to take a break for a minute, pull out the transit, and figure out exactly where water level is going to be, how much higher the dam needs to be. And we got to be thinking about how much more dirt we're actually going to need to dig to finish the dam. If you look back here behind me, you can see rock piles distributed out and through the pond. Back here behind me, you see a super long rock point, kind of like a pier, and behind me another rock point. And this is really awesome because if you guys don't know, fish love rocks. And the reason they love rocks is because it gives them so many places to hide from bigger fish. As we're building this pond, we're not only thinking about the catfish and bass. You gotta think about the crawdads. You gotta think about the bluegill, even the minnows, and even the algae that the minnows eat and so as we build these rock piles we have the bait fish in mind imagine you're a minnow you're this big but there's a fish this big trying to eat you what are you gonna do well i'll tell you what i'd do i would get my little minnow body and i'd go 
and then I get right back in there to where that big fish cannot get me. Well, that is exactly what all these rock piles do. These rock piles are also super important to the catfish. Unlike bass and bluegill, catfish actually need something pretty special to breed and lay eggs. They need a place where they can get back in kind of like a little hole, be super protected, and watch their eggs like that. In most man-made ponds, there's actually no rocks and no cover suitable for catfish to lay eggs in. So, they just don't. And that's why in most ponds, ever so often you have to restock catfish because they cannot reproduce on their own. But with these, all these rocks, every single rock is giving a catfish an opportunity to get back in the crack and lay eggs. Down in the deepest parts, you can see we have rock piles scattered across the bottom, along with just big rocks sitting and chilling wherever. This is really good because, hey, sometimes the fish want to go deep. As you look up closer to the bank, you also see smaller rock piles, which will end up being about two to five feet underwater. This is going to be great because we can walk the bank, visually see the rock piles so that we can fish them effectively. Then on the far back end, we built something pretty special. A pier made out of 100% rocks, which the top will be sticking out about six inches so that we can still walk across the rocks. With that many rocks stacked together, it should be a perfect place for bait fish to get in and hide and even spawn and stuff. And the point only about 10 yards from it will be the same exact thing. As you look back here behind me, you will notice a big pine tree. Just like the rocks, this is gonna give amazing habitat for little fish and big fish to just swim around and have a good time. This makes me like so excited because you can look at it on a macro level where you see the whole tree and like, oh yeah, that's cool. I can probably cast right there and maybe pull a bass off of it. Yeah, that's awesome. But I really like looking at it at a granular level. Let's take this right here for example. It doesn't look like much, but what does this stick right here mean to a minnow or crawdad? A minnow could literally live its entire life right in this little area right here. And to us, it's just a couple sticks. But to that minnow, it's gonna live its entire life here, make a bunch of friends here, possibly get eaten here, and then reproduce right here. There's so much going on right here for just a small fish. There could be algae grow right here on this stick, and then the minnow come over here to eat it. And then whenever the minnow goes back home, <laughs> He gets eaten because there was actually a bass under that rock. I want to show you some fossils we found. As my cousin on the excavator was sifting through all these rocks, he found this fossil. Take a look at that. Now, what is that? I don't know. Probably a, a tree, if we're going to be honest. But we can say it's a dinosaur if you want to. Make it sound cool. No one can prove us wrong. Somehow, petrified into this rock, we're just going to have, like, straight up a fossil in the bottom of this pond. And it's going to be covered up in water. And we'll probably never get to see it again. But that's okay because we found another fossil over here which is so much crazier. Look at this fossil. It's a way bigger tree, and you can very, very vividly see all the different things. And this is 100% rock. What exactly was this, you may ask? <laughs> I don't know. Could be a big fish that swallowed Jonah. Kentucky's not that far from Israel. I mean, not, not really, kinda. Yeah, it's probably a tree. But that's mega awesome. But okay, now let's get into the bad news. Ugh. As you could imagine, when you're building a pond this big, there's a lot of engineering that goes into it. And that's because there's a lot of risk with it. If we were to build this pond dam and the pond fills up with water and then the pond dam breaks, you're sending this much water down the creek. And there's actually a couple houses down the creek. So if this busted at the wrong time, it could literally wash away a house which is terrible and we're going to avoid that but a lot of this comes into the slope that we built the dam we noticed that the slope was slightly off and that we needed more dirt on the dam if you don't know the more dirt that you put on a dam that's just more dirt able to hold back more water but this wasn't going to cut it this was almost to the dangerous level it might work but it might not we ran the risk and it was looking like maybe maybe 10% chance that something went wrong in the future, but still only about a, maybe a 2% chance that something actually bad happens. Also, let's just keep this between me and you. I made up those statistics, but one thing for sure, the dam was too small. So day 15, our objective is clear. We have to make the dam thicker, and that means more dirt. We had to go down to the bottom of the pond, dig it out some more, which ended up making the pond even deeper and hold even more water, which is totally awesome. So we dug it up, loaded it up in the dump truck, and then I hauled it down to the dam, dumped it out, and my cousin used the excavator to facilitate the dirt around and load it up exactly where it needed to be, which was on the other side of the dam. We also had to track it in good to make sure that every piece of dirt that hit the dam was packed in super tight, giving it an even lower chance of busting out. But that's not all we had to do to the dam. In order to decrease the chances even more, we decided to lower the dam. 
And this is the sad part. Because when you lower the dam, you lower the water level, which means the pond is not gonna be as big as we originally planned. But to be uh, decent humans and reduce the risk of blowing someone's house away, that's what we did. And we're very happy to do that. If we can reduce the risk from 2% to 0.02%, we will do that and lower the pond as low as it needs to go. Now, of course, we could reduce the risk to zero if we quit building the pond, but we're not going to do that because we need a pond. So my cousin with the dozer shaved off the dam, made it lower, but we used that extra dirt to pack it on the backside and make this dam be able to hold much more weight, which will make it much safer for everybody. About midday during the search for more dirt, we actually needed the dirt, which was under one of the big standing poplar trees. So we didn't really have any options. We needed the dirt. The trade-off to get the dirt was well worth knocking down the poplar tree. So although we didn't want to, we had to do it. So it is actually back here beside me. We have the big root pot up there and then the two trunks go all the way down to the main bottom of the pond. That should be great for fishing, 100%. Probably even better than if it was standing. As we got towards the end of the day, we went ahead and pulled out the little survey thing so that we can make sure the dam is level across the whole thing. To do this, you set up this little scope thing, completely level, send a guy with a stick across the dam and if you look across and it reads the same number, you're good to go. The pond dam is even. Two foot six. Two feet, three and a half. Two feet, one and a half. Two feet. Two foot six. Basically, we do this until it's all the way across two foot six. We also added the spillway, which is just a pop. Actually, that's not the spillway. That's just a pop. That is the spillway. The spillway is higher up than the pop, but lower than the dam. That way, if the pop gets clogged up, water can still exit without burrowing over the dam and pretty much destroying the dam. After day 15, 100% of the pond dam is complete. We added up the totals and to build the pond, it came out to 725 loads of dirt, 1,091 gallons of diesel, and three really sore backs and knees. They were a little sore after this job. But the pond is done. But the ultimate pond is far from complete. We gotta build the structure. We gotta add the zip line. We gotta add the fish. We gotta add the dock. We gotta add the houseboat. And yes, we're adding a houseboat. And it's at this moment that I need you guys to comment below, what should we name this pond? Next video, I'm gonna pick a winner and I'm gonna send you free merch for whoever picks out the name for the pond. Click over here if you wanna see the land development where we're turning the 200 acres into the ultimate hunting land. 